Hey there, Stephanie here, your philosophy BFF. Yesterday evening, I had such a great discussion about free will vertacos that I wanted to talk about it today. I'd like to know what you think of the idea of becoming the best version of ourselves. Is this something that appeals to you? What would you say that actually means? To me, it looks like it implies that we can encourage a hidden potential to flourish. But my issue with the concept is that I'm not sure what exactly is this potential that we speak of. So I'm puzzled because it looks to me as we were asking a gardener to grow a plant without telling them whether it's a spiky cactus or a delicate orchid. And we know that what makes one person thrive might send another one spiraling into confusion. So finding the secret sauce to unlock your so-called potential, well, that can be quite the puzzle. Um, so that's why I'm skeptical about following one size fits all personal development recipes. I'm feeling that it's not the smartest move to kickstart a journey of self-discovery when we're basically just stumbling through the dark, not even sure what makes us, well, us. But there is one thing that we're sure of. It is that we all share something, our humanity. So we were all born, we're all gonna die, and in the meantime, we'll all experience the roller coaster of emotions love, fear, desire, sadness. Also, we're all self aware, pondering the meaning of our existence and our place in the world, maybe. And of course, we navigate the intricate dance of human relationships. So maybe this, our humanity, all those common features that we have, uh, this is the common ground we can build upon. Um, there is a subtitle of a book of Nietzsche, Ece Uomo. Ece Uomo. I don't know if you know the subtitle. It's How to Become What We Are. I don't know about you, but I love that promise. Um, but is it something we can do much about? What do you think? Do you believe that we're in control of our destiny or rather that the dice is already cast thinking about our identity who we are how we become who we are that's really the one subject that fascinates me most and uh as your philosophy bff i propose you to explore how our roots and surroundings shape us and to explore whether free will plays a role in our personal growth so Let's dive into the roots of our being, genetics, and how it shapes the masterpiece that is you. Have you ever wondered if your DNA is the ultimate script of your life, or if you get to be co-author of your destiny? Okay, picture this, a tiny seed hidden beneath the soil. Will it blossom into a delicate orchid or stand tall as a resilient cactus? Well, until the plant grows, it's a mystery to us, just like the future child in a mother's womb. But technology might let us know some info in advance, like the sex of the child. But we can't really predict if they'll be the quiet type or the relentless perfectionist or the one kid with an irresistible aura, right? The real magic lies in the depth of life's mystery. And all the philosophers that believe in God are convinced that what we are destined to become is in the hands of this great architect. But what if we don't believe in God? I don't believe in God, so where is the answer? Or if God, if she or he exists, just doesn't decide on any destiny and just let beings be, who knows, really? So whether we believe in God or not, we're sure of one thing. Genetics are a real powerhouse in shaping who we are. Take, for example, our ability to resist the siren call of gambling or battle addictions 
or to face the challenges of obesity, it can all be traced back to our genetic legacy. And let's be real, these inclinations can be pretty influential in our life choices and ultimately in shaping the very essence of who we are and how we navigate the world. It's like we're handed a script, but we are bound to stick to it or not? I guess that's the burning question. Before diving into this free will question, I would just like us to remember the privileges we've, we often take for granted. You know, some folks are born into seriously tough situations, poverty, war, you name it. So if you, like me, live in a prosperous 21st century nation, even for people from minorities that still have so much to fight for, well, there's no denying that we've landed in one of the best areas and places in the entire history of humanity so far. So just imagine if circumstances would be different, like would you still be turn, tuning in this into this philosophical discussion? I think you would not. And when we aspire to reach our fullest potential, which is the question today and become the best version of ourselves, we're definitely riding high on Maslow's pyramid, like chasing the self-actualization dream at the very top. So I believe we can't talk about free will if we lack this lucidity to recognize our very privileged position, despite all the improvements to which we still legitimately aspire. And now to the big question, can I do anything about who I am? Do you grasp the fundamental principles of epigenetics? To put it very simply, epigenetics is like a switch inside you. Um, when you eat healthy and stay active, it turns up the activity of good genes, making you healthier. But if you do things like smoking, getting sleep deprived or other unhealthy habits, it turns down the activity of certain genes, affecting how your body works in a negative way. So. We could say, obviously I'm being super metaphorical, um, we could say it's like a control system for your body influenced by the choices you made. So even our DNA, like the very core of who we are, even that can be influenced. So this is good news, right? I have a question though. When too much influence over genetics is too much, we know that technology could lead us pretty far on the eugenist path. If choosing the sex of your offspring right now, that's something that designer babies do. Um, this doesn't seem too hurtful, even though it still can question us. What about choosing skin tone or even in the future adding enhance enhancements such as like Neuralink talks about seeing in infrared or augmenting cognitive abilities. What about those? Okay, so DNA, it has a large place in how our destiny unfolds. What about psychology? Hmm? Do you feel the burden of your past family experiences? Well, if you do first, welcome to the club. I believe we're the majority here. People with a perfectly functional family seem to be quite the exception. Unfortunately, in some cases, it's much more than just a burden. It's actually like an actual trauma to overcome. And when you have a lot of psychological baggage, it shapes your life. Even though you have a little one, it still shapes your life, meaning it restricts your free will in one way or another. Now, whether you start at the bottom of the ladder, uh, ladder regarding your uh, mental health, or you're lucky enough to be more advanced on your journey because you haven't received too many rocks on your left path, well, you still have a similar choice to make. Do you prefer to focus on maintaining your current equilibrium as it is, even though it's not perfect, or to give it a go at a therapy that might, no promise made, change things for the better? If I may share unsolicited advice, I believe that if you choose to have descendants, the problem will be passed on one way or another. So you might want to do the work for your loved ones, if not for yourself. So let's recap. We start our life journey with some DNA. 
and our environment and our psychological baggage have the power to shape us whether in a good or bad direction. It's common knowledge also that eating well, sleeping well, exercising and being with people you love can improve one's body and mental health. So how much of your life is determined? The world isn't a precise account of what is distributed among human beings. So you might be privileged to live in a country where no war is raging, but it might show when you eat lots of chocolate during the holiday seasons. Well, it doesn't for others. You might feel unlucky for some of your life lottery picks and quite grateful for others. Interestingly, we discover that some of the things that seemed immutable until recently are more malleable than we thought, like DNA. So we shouldn't disregard the power we have to improve our lot. Of course, it's hard. Of course, it might be discouraging to see how easy life is on others. Maybe just stopping looking at social media for a week is an easy way to feel better. Hmm? Let's think about that. Or embrace the Stoics perspective. You know, the Stoics, those ancient Greek philosophers from around 300 before Christ. Well, the Stoics, they believed in destiny and they believed that events unfold according to nature's will. What they say is that our actions are influenced by both internal and external factors. This means that some aspects of you, of who you are, may be predetermined, but your perspective and outlook remain within your control. So for Stoics, while you cannot change everything, you do have the power to choose how you perceive and respond to the world. So if you seek peace, you must accept that your actions are determined, but you are free, that's where your free will lies, you're free to choose how you perceive the world. Uh, have you read Paolo Coelho's book, The Alchemist? He also believed that we come into the world with a predetermined destiny, much like uh, a sunflower seed is destined to grow into a big yellow flower. He speaks of a personal legend that we have to discover. When we talk about becoming the best version of ourselves, I'm not sure what we talk about. If we talk about revealing our personal legend, like Coelho, our hidden potential, well, then it means that we believe in destiny and predetermination. Then our goal is to be a good gardener, to help the sunflower to grow as beautifully as it can. But there's another view that actually totally contradicts predetermined destiny, and that is the main trend, the main trend in uh, personal development. The idea is that we can achieve anything with a bit of willpower and specific goals. And books and videos promise quick results with happiness and fulfillment just a few steps away. Well, I see a significant obstacle to applying these methods, though. They all seem to assume that you already know who you want to be. And the fact that this approach presumes having clear goal in mind is a bit of a problem for me because I don't know about you, but well, in my, in my case, stating what I want is not always an easy task. I kind of feel a, a tension between the image that the world perceives of me and my deepest feelings. Like there is a lack of alignment. So, well, let's say that often in my life, I'm feeling like I'm on a theater stage without knowing my role, which is really not, not a nice, nice feeling. And even sometimes, so worse yet, it seems like the role I've been given doesn't truly represent who I am. So I'm asked to play something that I know I'm not good at. It's just not me. It's bound to fail. And it's so frustrating because I know that I'm much better at something else. And that's not the part I'm given. So in the end, I feel like I'm a mediocre actress when I'm convinced that with that other role, I could blossom and play so well. I don't know if you also experience similar feelings. It's 
it really bothers me a lot. So I don't know. Do you also question like your identity, your purpose and the meaning of your actions or even your life? Um, if you do, there's a Japanese word uh, that you might know that refers to a sense of purpose, uh, a reason of, for being. I think it actually translates as a reason to wake up in the morning. And that word, that, that Japanese word, it's the ikigai. You might have heard of this concept of ikigai. Um, it highlights the idea of balance. It believes that our purpose lies at the intersection of four things. What we love, what we excel at, what the world needs, and what we can be pet for. So while the idea has its merits, I still find that identifying these four elements require grappling with heavy and complex questions. I believe you need to work a lot on yourself to understand first how you work um, before you can use the concept. So it seems useful when you're like further away on the journey of knowing yourself. Now I want to share my personal view on free will and determinism determinism and uh i'd be very happy to know what you think of this perspective which uh, is the one that i find most accurate it is that a person is both a stone to be cut and the sculptor of that stone i'm not inventing the concept like for instance nietzsche uh, used it um, in his book uh, where he has this um this person, Zarathustra, that um, says at one point uh, something like, become who you are, be the master and the sculptor of yourself. So like a sculptor, we shape ourselves, removing what doesn't belong to us and revealing kind of our true essence. Um, but to carve one stone, well, we first need to remove what doesn't belong to us, like shedding whatever our environment predetermined us to be and to believe, and also removing unnecessary passion so that we can extract the essence of our being and shape ourselves to perfection, if we will. Um, Nietzsche, he encourages us to become who we are, he he encourages us to em emancipate ourselves from e external influences and he really believes that we should create our own values that align with our authentic nature and in a letter to lou andreas salome that he was very much in love with he once wrote become who you are one needs to emancipate oneself from one's chain and ultimately one must also emancipate oneself from one's emancipation. So shaping our stone involves rediscovering our authentic selves, free from conditioning, and always questioning the values that we ourselves decided to follow, to never settle for good. Nietzsche advocates for a continuous process of transformation. It's like being on a never ending journey where each step forward is not about reaching a final destination, but about embracing the journey itself. And one thing that he says is that to, to reach what really is us, but us being something that evolves, that never settles, um, one way to see it is to see where we always, where we always resist. That's where we truly are ourselves where there is resistance it means that there is something that says no this is not me so we should be aware of those resistances in our lives maybe a bit like that theater analogy like when i'm not happy with the part i'm given it means that i have to move away from that part and find another part how to find the actual part that suits me is is the journey that's that's the hard part but at least i have this indication that where i am is not the good good place so i have to go somewhere else at least and um i believe we could consider ourselves like a diamond you see 
the diamond is a hidden stone. It needs to be ex extracted. And once it's out of the mine, it needs a lot of hard work to be cut with a thousand facets to reveal its beauty. So diamonds are not created, they are revealed, you know, and it's our task to bring out what they can be. And if we don't, it can also remain concealed forever, no problem. So the sculptures and analogy um, is interesting. And also there's another interpretation um, where when we think about it, a sculpture, a sculptor, sorry, uh, envisions the the shape the sculpture uh, they have in mind. They they want to give the rose stone a specific shape before they begin their work. So the final form is prefigured in their mind, and as they work on the stone, they reveal the form. So there's a goal to be reached beforehand. It means that. Unlike personal development, the stone cutting analogy implies that the sculptor must consider the constraints of the stone. It's not a one size fit all solution because we know that a hard material cannot be cut in the same way as a brittle one, for instance. So from this perspective, there are limits to what we can become. We cannot become whatever we decide starting from anywhere. Um, primary circumstances constrain us even though there's still a lot of room to whatever can be created. So that's my view. What do you think of uh, this view of free will and determinism? Do you agree with it or do you see things otherwise? I'm very interested in what you think. And if, you, if there are other topics that you wanna cover, I'd be super happy to cover them because it's really my topic. I really love that. So have a good one.